You're listening to a Time Machine podcast. Old movie Time Machine. An adventure through time and or space. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Old Movie Time Machine. You know this show. It's the show that in which we watch color films made between the years of 1945 and 1965 in the old U.S. of A., and we use them as windows into the past. You know the deal. We climb through these windows. We take a look around at the world as it was during this very formative and pivotal moment after the Second World War. And while we do that, we're going to be asking critical questions. Catherine, critical questions. Questions. I'm listening. Such as, <laughs> who are these people? What are their habits? How are they treating each other? What decisions are they making? And why are they making them? Also, and probably the most critical of all the critical questions, what are they wearing? And what do their living rooms look like? Then at the end of the show, we're going to ask the final critical question. This would be the ultimate critical, critical question, which is, and this is on behalf of all of humanity, you guys. So pay attention. This movie we just watched, uh, are we going to keep watching this? Are we going to keep uh, passing this down the line? Or can we just kind of set it aside and move along? Is there anything to take away from this? We will find out. By the way, I'm your host, Through Time and or Space, Justin Zeppa, joined as ever by my panel of qualified international experts at being human beings in the early 21st century. Starting with, to my left... Catherine Sherlock. Hi, Catherine. Hello. Welcome back to the program. Hi, oh, thank you. Lovely to see you. Yeah, it's good to be here. We're doing a power trio today, Catherine. It's me, you, and Carolyn Nowrose, my sister, and yours. Hi, Hi sis. Hi, everyone. Hi. Welcome back to the program. Thanks for having me. Now, of course, it's just power trio today. Brindis, as we have already talked about, has been called to Washington. She is right now being interviewed by a, a subcommittee of Congress about mm. the museum they have a lot of questions about uh, the zoning regulations and what we're trying to do. They want answers. It's crazy. Uh, I don't know why, but that's closed door. But I think maybe, you know, if, if this continues on, hopefully they're going to start broadcasting and maybe we can get, you know, check in, see how the hearings are going. But she's out there fighting the good fight on our behalf. Uh, Shrishma Naik, our other co-host, she, uh, I'm just to check my notes here. I think she had a call in today. It looks like, uh, yeah, migraine. So uh, wow, yeah, kind of catchy. Uh, it's interesting. Migraine or martini, Those one of the two. Contagious migraines. Mm. But moving right along, today we're talking about 1954's Vincente Minnelli's "The Long, Long Trailer." Before we get into it, of course, we'll start as we always do. Catherine, do you have a one-line review of "The Long, Long Trailer"? Oof. I have several phrases. Ah. Um, I think the one I'm going to go with is triggering levels of people in every shot, hyperventilating. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yep. Spot on. <laughs> Nailed it. And we're going to talk about it a lot, I think. <laughs> Carolyn, what do you got? One line review. I think I can really sum it up in saying... It's really hard to be a man in America in the 1950s, <laughs> particularly if Lucille Ball is your wife. It doesn't seem to make a lot of sense that that would be the case, but that's what this movie tells us, right? That's, yes. a, that's the message that's being brought across. Uh, I've gone with Catherine, not to, I mean, we did this independently, of course, but uh, all human life is defined by the projection and acceptance of high anxiety. Mm -hmm. This is, uh, well, couple things. This is a very comforting movie for me personally. Uh, there's a lot of things happening in here that make me feel right at home. I don't know what it is. I'm kind of, pers this is a, a, a bit of a personal journey for me because I'm homing in on like what year I would be best in, I think, or what year speaks to me the most. This is 1954 and not unlike uh, the War of the Worlds in 1953, I think it might be around this era, like the early 1950s. There's a lot of stuff happening here that I really dig. That being said, so much anxiety. So, like you say, triggered, like yeah. repeatedly. Just, I need everybody to stop talking. <laughs> I need yeah, you to just get out of the frame. Give me some space. 
please stop making noise. Let's finish whatever this task is. I mean, they actually visibly had Desi Arnaz uh, being sort of overwhelmed at one point and having PTSD about he the gets PTSD. Lessons, yes. So. Oh my god, I was getting PTSD. I have PTSD from that scene yeah. of him getting the driving lessons. Yeah. So let's get into this, shall we? The long, long trailer. We open with our main character, Nikki, played by Desi Arnaz, who is just bombing along on the highway in a great yellow Mercury car. And he shows up at the Laramie Trailer Park. Now, we just take a look at this trailer park. So right away, we enter Laramie Trailer Park, and I'm starting to feel it. I'm feeling very cozy vibes here. Catherine wonders why. I can see it. I can see it on your face. But hey, Catherine, this was approved by the uh, uh, trailer something uh, commission of... Camping. Uh, uh, yes, camping men um, of America. Uh, association. A lot of, uh, a lot of winged logos back mm. in this era here. We see this later on the actual trailer, the new moon trailer. You can see this on your uh, Pan Am logo for the uh, infamous airline of the times. And it is a dark and stormy night. Always a great way to open any story you're going to tell. It was a dark and stormy night. Here we are at Laramie Trailer Court. Do you want to know what that actually means? Yeah. Trailer Coach Manufacturer Association. Yeah. Oh, of course. Mm. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Camping Men of America. <laughs> we get it. It's just, yeah. yeah. All, yeah. all the same. It's all, all the, the same. same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. all the same. So, Nikki rushes out in the rain, and he rushes up to a giant yellow trailer, and he starts pounding on the door and shouting inside, and then he looks over, and what does he see? A for sale sign. Guys, we've got some conflict. We are opening on conflict here. What is happening, I wonder? What is happening, you all wonder? So, Nikki runs back to the office through the rain. And again, as soon as we get into this office, I just want to go to there. Everything about this speaks to me on some subconscious level. Catherine, you're shaking your head. No, you are not into what would we call this design aesthetic? Mid-century uh, camping it's fuddy duddy. It's, <laughs> it's great grandma's living room. It is, yeah. It's, there's, there's there's mounted like antlers on the wall. We got antlers What's on the wall. What's wrong with that? We great. like antlers on the wall. Yeah, I love antlers <laughs> on the wall, Catherine. Jeez. Unpleasant curtains. Uh, they there's a pot bellied mm -hmm. stove. That's grandma yeah, before. Has you don't not? like the stove? No, I'd have the stove. Okay, Probably you'd have the stove. Anything I would have. Frankly. And the rest of it is just easy chairs and rainy nights and uh, cozy lamps, right? And we're all wearing fedoras and smoking cigs and reading magazines. Yeah. I can kind of smell it. Oh, there's a smell. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's for old. sure. It, yeah, it's old. Yeah. But this would have been new. Fusty. Yeah, but it, it would smell old and fusty even then. Even then, yeah. That's, mm -hmm. the, that's the smell of the times. Well, with all the cigarette, cigar, and, and hair pipe oil. smoke. Yeah, oh, geez. Yeah, and probably some kind of probably soaked in fragrance everywhere. people are wearing. Yeah. Like, a, you know, it's a collision course of, uh, of scents that we're, we're looking at here. I personally don't think the curtains are bad because they're kind of like a nice diamond pattern. They're like not a, like an offensive floral. I am concerned about the curtains that are behind the pot-bellied stove. <laughs> Whatever do you mean? Just because they're mm. draped over the stove, the stove itself? and could exactly. be yeah. and could go up I'm at just, any moment. <laughs> right, right. So just as a like fire safety hazard, I love mm -hmm. the pot-bellied stove, but I would not have potentially flammable fabric draped so closely behind the pot bellied stove in the corner. Mm -mm. You're absolutely right. It's inadvisable. And that's a safety tip for you folks at home. Okay. So As please he's make lighting a up a cigarette right next to the pot bellied stove. He absolutely is. Uh, Desi slash Nikki, by the way, looking great. He is doing some, let's call it trailer park office smoking right now. He is wearing a full on trench coat and fedora and he is certainly a man of 1954. He is the man of 1954, really. And everything we have going here is just an entire, it's up north cottage chic, you know? Like, uh, I'm, I'm all about it. I love everything happening here. So he's in this office. He runs into an older gentleman who's seated and uh, uh, merrily reading a trailer park magazine, as he is wont to do. And he is uh, 
hanging out and he's like, hey, look, the uh, I know you're looking for the trailer park uh, manager. They're out looking for something right now, but they'll be back. And uh, I'm just here waiting for my wife to come back. We're going to buy that big old trailer over there and we're going to have a, a heck of a retirement time. Nikki, at this point, advises the older gentleman against this because it will turn your life, according to him, into complete chaos. He uh, he has arrived in the rain in the middle of the night with nothing but the clothes on his back, which he has apparently been wearing for several days at this point, as he has been looking for this trailer. Now, as he is advising against the purchase of a giant yellow trailer, we go into a flashback, you guys. Not our first flashback, of course. We've flashed back before. Leave Her to Heaven, I believe, starts with a flashback. But it's an interesting storytelling device. And we go back to simpler times uh, in which we meet Nikki's wife, Tacy. Tacy and Nikki, Lucy and Ricky. Close? I thought he was saying Stacy the entire movie. You thought it was Stacy? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, it's just a Tacy, which I've never heard of before. You know, she she cries her way into him entertaining the idea of moving his life. Because again, let's reiterate, these people are not going on vacation. These people are are moving into this for their lives. Mm-hmm. This is the plan. Right. Which is odd. You know, we probably should have front-loaded the show with this. My bad. But this is the start of our summer vacation, you guys. We've been working so hard making these programs. I mean, we've made at least, I don't know, summer seven, vacation. eight of them at this point. We got to go on summer vacation. I need a vacation, everybody. Yep. We're, we're seeing the sights. I remember this as a vacation movie. It is just a life change movie. It has all we, of the trappings of a vacation movie, but. Are we to understand that he has a job that has him travel, but he is not yes. a musician as in a traveling musician that we would know Ricky Ricardo as? Right at the Tropicana. No, my impression was more like an architect or an engineer or something like that. Yeah. Oh, he was engineering jobs. He, why yeah. would you say because that? Because she said something about because there's always going to be a bridge here or a something a there. It, there or- there. Yeah, exactly. Mm, okay, okay. Because I was thinking, because they never explicitly state what it is, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they, at a certain point, they're having dinner and they're talking about like when they met, which was at the opening of a, a highway. Mm. And I believe she says something about we were all, we, we were all partying on the beach or something like that. It was a totally confusing set of circumstances that made me think because he is, uh, while there are no instruments in this film that I'm aware of, he is singing. Uh, repeatedly, he does a lot of singing. Hmm. So I thought maybe he's one of those uh, part of those bands that is there to celebrate, like a ribbon cutting or something like that. Ah, oh. maybe something like that. I didn't see any musical instruments in the trailer. So. No, and that's he, the thing. You would. Yeah. Think. I feel like if this had been a band, they would have really played it up. And so I agree with Catherine that this was some sort of like civil engineering. Okay, mm-hmm. which job was very goes from place to place to do. Very hot in post war America, civil engineering. Right. And that was the that was the Lots sexy of right. That was working on a website back in the day. Um, yeah, we're always we're building tons of dams and bridges and highways. Before Eisenhower you move on from too. this uh, slide, though, can we note how amazing her dress is? It is kind <laughs> of spectacular. Sure. Go ahead, note it. She, I mean, one, it's that big full skirted uh, A line that Catherine and I have already brought your attention to, but mm-hmm. this is like almost looks like a seersucker or some sort of very gauzy blue and white or gray and white striped fabric it's got like lovely cloth covered buttons Mm. um on the bodice down to the waistline and like this wonderful shawl collar and the cap sleeve and the pearl necklace and she's got like just the perfect amount of tan for a redhead nice little golden glow and she's beautiful yeah she is like in her prime really good look but i mean equally how how can she possibly think that this is a trailer is practical it's a great for question. This kind of for this life- lifestyle that she's clearly got going on here, which is beautiful dresses, and she's never she's voluminous never not, dresses, like dressed beautifully. Yes, I mean this is presumably. I guess this is his house. Is that the idea? No, this. No, this is. I think they're in a friend's house because again, I think they alluded to the fact that. He, you know, they have to kind of like bum it around staying with people or in right. hotels or blah, blah, blah. So right. This, I guess it's something temporary. So essentially she's having that desire to nest. Mm. They're going to be getting married. His job is very mobile and she yeah. wants to nest. Yeah. It's uh, hey, they're, they're young and, and fancy free, right? They're, they're not married yet. They don't have kids or anything. It's a choice, whatever. They're making it. 
she's got a flyer for this thing called the Bungalette. And she is like, look, for the price that, you know, we would pay to get into a house of our very own, we could have a house with wheels. We could go Can do we anything we wanted. Talk uh, about these prices. 1750. <laughs> 1750. 1700. Mm-hmm. Yes. Five, mm-hmm. five mm-hmm. zero. Yeah. Dollars. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. right. yeah. Right. For a, for a house or a trailer. A trailer. I yeah. just love that all of them have double beds. Yeah. Even, okay. Even so the bungalow here. Yeah. We're looking at a diagram that is in this this pamphlet that she is showing him. We have double beds Twin in beds. the back. Or yes, yes uh, side by side. Yeah. And the I mean, guys, I don't think these are tall enough for for somebody of of any kind of height. I just I can't see it. I can't picture it being worth it. Uh, but they in this picture they have fit uh, at least four adults in here. And it's it's a luxury home for practical people, the bungalow. So Nikki is a is a fairly decent sport about it. He's like, all right, well, we'll go take a look at it, right? So they go to the trailer expo. You got <laughs> amazing cringing physically. <laughs> Too many people. It's a lot of people. Uh, have you ever been in an expo like this? We're looking at yes. an expo center with yes. a bunch yeah, of. I, I have. I, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been to the Ideal Home exhibition several times. Okay, cool. In London. That yes. sounds great. Superb. Yeah, I like these. I've been to yes. one of these for yachts. I don't know why. <laughs> I can't remember when exactly, but I've, it's one of those, you know, you go and you tour a bunch of big boats you can't afford. And then also, very exciting at the time, we're looking at some a woman diving into a swimming pool here in this shot. That pool uh, is not deep enough for how far Absolutely she's not. She's going to she's going to have a lot of Cairo issues uh soon enough. But I at the yacht expo, they had a pool and in that pool was a water skiing squirrel. Actual oh live squirrel. Goodness. Yeah. What? Yeah. Not a bad taxidermy squirrel. No, no. Real squirrel. Okay. Standing up, holding onto the little bar, All getting right. towed around by a remote controlled boat. Mm-hmm. It was great. It has left an impression. I have re- I'm remembering many years later <laughs> that happy squirrel, <laughs> well worth the visit, no doubt. But yeah, so Trailer Expo, guys, the 1950s United States of America is crazy for trailers, it would appear. Mm. So they find themselves the bungalow. Take a look at it. Turns out, would you believe it? It's much too small. It's not going to do what they need it to do. And they're a little disappointed. And they, you know, we get some entertaining scenes where they get crowded in with a bunch of uh, other looky loos. And it's just a very crowded scene, very uncomfortable. Very claustrophobic. Yes. Again, this is the, be- the beginning of the anxiety really starts with yes. the bungalow. Like mm-hmm. the, the core trigger. Uh, is beginning to be pulled with the with the bungalette. And so they leave and they're a little dejected until they look across the convention center and spot themselves the gorgeous new moon giant yellow and chrome trailer. Guys, let's talk about it. What do you think? Catherine, tell me what you think about the new moon trailer. Um well it, <laughs> they do a nice it's job kind of, of it's of, kind of a bit brutalist. But mm-hmm. not in a way that I enjoy. Not brutal enough. Not no. Yeah, there's just it's not. Uh, it's not some. Yeah, it's not. Not a good designed thing. It seems to me. It's a little shoeboxy. What is the net? The, like the tent thing on top. Was that actually part of it, or is this like just part of dress, this up here? Dressing. I, I think this is the display. The baby. Yeah. Yes, I believe okay. so. Just yeah. to give okay. it a little little visual flair. Mm. I mean, I think it looks cool and flashy for like that particular time period. Again, I feel like I'm at the Henry Ford Museum. Yeah, for sure. Uh, they need to get one of these. I would like to give a tour <laughs> or, or take a tour rather. I always um, like that. What is the round circular house? I like that one. Oh, the Dimaxian house. <laughs> yes, yeah, the Dimaxian Buc- house. I do love touring that one and thinking about what it would be like to live there. Buckminster Fuller. Mm. Are you are you familiar? No. Oh, it's cool. I'll tell you about it later. Okay. It arrives in a giant tube. And it pops out like an umbrella. What? Yeah, they only made two. There's one in existence. Um, didn't take it off, looks but like it was a flying saucer. It was supposed to be the future of housing in the U.S. <laughs> okay. after the war. Tacy falls in love with the new moon trailer at first sight, and she is drawn to it 
like a moth to a flame. Nikki tries to distract her and is like, look, this thing's going to cost like $10 billion. It's not practical. Let's just go home. We'll figure something else out. Sorry, the bungalow didn't work out. But she is like, look, for fun, for S&Gs, Nick, let's just go check it out. We're, we're already at the trailer convention. Why would we not entertain ourselves with a big, beautiful yellow and chrome trailer? Now, at this point, my eye is drawn to, since this is a convention, uh, you're going to see a lot of people in the background, many interesting characters and figures from the 1950s in the background. In this particular shot, I wanted to point out this man here. Uh, he is smoking in the background. He's doing a very specific type of smoking. He is doing fishing lesson smoking. This uh, gentleman <laughs> here is some kind of boat captain who is demoing a brand new fishing pole for this gentleman and they're really enjoying it. They, they're they in the background forever talking about this fishing pole. So just be aware of that. So they decide to go over to the trailer and just take a look inside. And as they do, as they approach, I want to just point out another type of smoking. There's this old man with a who's doing some trailer lounging smoking. He's just sitting in a lawn chair outside the display trailer. Uh, just smoking and living his best life and wearing uh, what appears to be some kind of blue ribbon. He might be some either a, he's either a judge, a, a judge or an award winner of some kind, but right. just a curious figure who left grandpa here. Are they coming back to pick him up? Does he know his address? Would you imagine that that kind of smoking requires any kind of intervention from the hand or is it literally just pop, 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 pop. what do you mean like as far as it, he just not, keeps it this. forever yeah, in his like, in his right. mouth yeah well we do we have seen a lot in this era so far we've seen a lot of just in mouth we're multitasking and we're also smoking at the same time i mm. feel like we've seen that a lot yes so we go inside this big beautiful yellow and chrome trailer we're going inside the new moon trailer mm. we take a look at this little kitchen here i mean it is it has all of the accoutrements uh, a kitchen would have. You know, what's your impression having, you know, seeing the inside of this place? Yeah, I mean, this is the kind of stuff I love, really. You know, it, it's it's a small space, but it's got everything you need. And maybe it's been thought out and it's quite practical. Mm -hmm. and, um, th these are the kind of um, little ingenious things I like in, in these small spaces. Um, yeah, it's probably quite doable, but I mean, not really for cooking. I mean, for, I mean, she talks about soufflés and casseroles. And yes. Stuff. There's what? Some She's point. got big like, cooking plans. Right. There's no way. N no. There's not enough counter space. New no. for that. Uh, that's a great point, actually. There's just, there's really just one cabinet's worth of uh, counter space over here. That's, uh, that's tough. You need, you need some prep space, you know? Uh, but uh, the, the rest of it, you know, it's, uh, it, it's a it's a space that is well as well used as possible, I guess, under the circumstances. Uh, and as they tour it, uh, poor Nikki, oh, he's he's bumping his head on the door and he's uh, falling all over the place. I mean, he takes some spills in this trailer, like this this still right here we're looking at of him falling into the sunken, sunken living room. Sunken living room. <laughs> I mean, he is totally at, he's at a, a forty five degree angle here. He he hits that floor hard. He takes that hit and. He's a bit overwhelmed by it all, and they're like, okay, well, look, it's expensive. It's very nice. We can all agree on this, but let's move on with our lives. And Tacey, though, is not quite satisfied with that answer, so she goes and chats with the sales gentleman who is there, and he's like, yeah, it costs like $70 billion. However, you could put down a little down payment that is the exact amount that you were going to spend on your bungalow over there, and then you just got yourself a little mortgage. You just finance the rest of it. She takes this as, okay, great. Now I can have giant yellow trailer. Rushes out to let Nikki know about the financing. He is very skeptical about it and tries to walk her away from it. Again, as we're walking through the convention center, I need to point out these figures one more time. We have a smoking fishing lesson man over here. We have the old grizzled sea captain with the fishing pole over here. We have a new friend. We have a new friend who's dressed identical to the first guy. He's just popped his collar outside of his gray jacket. And then I also want to point out, there's one other figure in the background here. I'm very curious. I want to know his story. I mean, within reason, but the, the saddest boy scout? boy scout in the world, just kind of pouting over here. 
That looks like a troop leader. That looks like a grown up in a Boy Scout outfit. I mean, he's wearing he's wearing the, sh- the little shorts. He's got knee socks. His knees are together. I mean, he looks pathetic. Uh, I just wonder. It looks like he's holding some. Maybe he's collecting funds or something like that from passersby. But he looks so dejected, and it is so interesting. He's straight out of a Wes Anderson movie. He really is. Mm-hmm. He really just. What, what's your story, dude? How'd you get there? Who signed you up for this duty? Don't you just want to go? Are you making any money with your little tin can there? There's no love in this man's life. This is a man, right? Yeah, I was going to say. He looks like a grown-up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's at least Looks like he's got a five o'clock shadow. Yeah. Yeah, If you are... Listen, I mean, I don't want to judge people or whatever, but at the same time, if you are a grown-up wearing little scout shorts... Dressed as a child. Yeah, hanging out at the the trailer expo. Mm. mm, Maybe I will judge you, actually, the more (laughs) we talk about it. So maybe we should just move right along. Mm. Also, at this point, the trailer convention is a great excuse to uh, check in with the hat index of 1954. And guys, th- I mean, there are hats aplenty. Everybody's rocking hats. Mm. She's got a hat. Mm. Nikki's got a hat. The trailer salesman's got a hat. They have both of their fedoras on his desk at this moment. There's a chef out there. He's got a little chef's hat. Everybody's in hats at this point. As far as I can tell, the hat index is high. Mm-hmm. So 54, yes. very pro hats. All righty, and here we are interrupting the program again. A different microphone, a different room, a different day entirely. But guys, I mean, listening back on this one, wow. Uh, instant classic? Uh, you tell us. Uh, oh, at party line at oldmovietimemachine.com. Thanks. Anyway, you know the deal at this point. I have to interrupt and tell you about all of the merchandise available at our T Public store. The link is in the show notes. You can go there, check it out. There's all kinds of incredible merchandise. Uh, for you to choose. Uh, Today I would like to highlight the design that we call the time train. You know, it's a bunch of, uh, you know, mid-century people sitting on a train going through the vortex of time, as you do, you know, as we are doing currently. This is uh, what time travel is all about. And mostly this is what old movie time machine is all about. Again, it's not a show about movies. It's a show about time. Uh, Anyway, uh, what I would really love to see for you guys is to have the time train design on a magnet. That's right, a magnet that you can put on your refrigerator. If you are that type of person, you can collect them. You could trade them. So please, hop on the old time train, by which I mean buy some stuff with that design on it. And if you do, we will be so grateful and we will thank you, just as I'm going to do right now. Thank you. And now back to the show. But... Guys, you can't just have a trailer and a car. You must connect the two. That means you got to get yourself a trailer hitch. So where do we go? We go to the trailer hitch hitch store. We go to this garage where we meet a hitch welder who is credited as the the foreman. And he is bringing a lot of energy to this movie, this guy right here. Uh, And I don't think I like it. Ultimately, Mm -hmm. he's he's got he's he's going very big with his performance, I would Mm -hmm. say. Uh, I looked this guy up. He is sort of a, a mainstay of 1950s, 60s, and 70s television uh, character acting. So, and he definitely kind of oozes that. Like he's a he's a loud talker. He's a fast talker. He's a shouter. He yeah. mm, he's the kind of guy who's going to make you feel bad because you don't know how to weld your trailer hitch onto your car yourself. So. Let me show you how to do it the right way type of thing. I don't know. Let's let's notch up the anxiety level a couple more. Mm-hmm. Okay, because we've now we've got uh 80 grand plus in a mortgage looming. Now right. we're also so he gets he gets the uh, the trailer hitch done uh, attached to the car and the trailer is attached to the car and the foreman here makes uh poor Nikki take his first drive of pulling the trailer back to uh Tacy's house. And so let's let's amp up the anxiety a little bit more because now we're learning things. And when somebody is teaching you a thing and making you actively do the thing that you don't know how to do, but you're learning how to do, I, I mean, it's a terrible scenario for go me back personally. To when again, learn to drive mm-hmm. a car. Uh, yes, let's go back to <laughs> driving Dad's Camaro at the uh, high oh school parking God. lot and being shouted at. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to drive a car. Mm -hmm. I didn't ask for any of this. (laughs) 
That was my experience. Exactly. Always learn to drive a car where you can't sense where the front of the car is, where you can't see over the hood of the car. Oh, God. Always start there. Uh, always start your trailer towing experience with a 40-foot house trailer. Uh, yes. Always do that. So I'm going to ask you guys, uh, it's a little pop quiz. What is the first thing that you must remember when hauling your rig? Uh would it be the trailer? Break? Trailer breaks first. You're right. I think Carolyn, I will remember that. Do you remember? Great. Yeah. Trailer, trailer breaks, breaks first. first. Uh, this, the foreman shouts this no fewer than 772 times over the course of two minutes. Uh, and and again, I mean, Nikki's having a freak, just a complete meltdown at this man yelling at him and lunging over him to, to grab the trailer break, breaks himself. It's a, it's a total disaster. This is a nightmare scenario from top to bottom. I hate everything about this. But what I do love is that when he almost destroys the trailer for the probably second or third time, it, is, it gives us a shot of uh, this cement truck that they have almost run into. But what I like about this is that this is just stock footage of 1954 or three, whenever they film this. This is what I live for right here is just, mm. this isn't Hollywood. This isn't a set. This is just what the street looks like in 1954. Have a look at That's it. It's like La Brea Avenue, 1954. You think it's La Brea? I don't know. I'm guessing. I mean, it look. I could see that. I've I've been there. Uh, it, it it looks very similar. Yeah. I mean, you know, look, we're looking at a picture of it right now. I've, I'm going to describe to you a bunch of cars of the time, a bunch of buildings looks and sloggy. signs of the time. Yeah, it certainly does look hot. Hot black top. Uh, the roads are in pretty good shape, though. Brand new. So it's either in somewhere in Hollywood or it's out in the valley. Either one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Could be Studio City. So, yeah. One thing I would say is I don't think um, cement truck designs have uh, advanced. They haven't change. changed at all, have no. they? That's a great point. <laughs> this looks like any cement truck you would see today. No, no. Wow. <laughs> wow. So There's some, got to be somebody nailed the design back then. I guess so. They nailed it in one. <laughs> We're done with this. Just set it aside. She has it all figured out now. She's like, look, here's the deal. We're doing these long haul drives all day and we're getting a little fussy. The blood sugar is dropping effectively. So here's what we're going to do. We've got a new plan to craft. We're going to stop before we actually stop at our final spot. We're a half hour before we get there. We're going to pause. I'm going to pop into the trailer, start making dinner. You're going to pull us into our trailer park spot. When you're done, dinner is served and ready. We have full tummies and better dispositions all around and are happier people and a happier couple. So this is a great plan, right, you guys? You guys, right? Yeah, she's trying to troubleshoot. Yeah, she's being constructive here. Issue. Now, why she could not foresee the issues surrounding mm -hmm. a trailer in motion while making a very fancy dinner. Mm -hmm. Again, another multi-course dinner. There's a salad involved. Uh, it's, it's beyond me, but they're going to go for it. They give it a try. This is the... It's, it's to, you know, give give Lucille another chance to do her great physical comedy. Which she is excellent at, and she yes. she makes the most of it. She really uh, sucks the blood out of all of these opportunities. Uh, so, yes. so here she is getting getting her meal prepared the next day, and he's about to uh, hop back into the car to drive them uh, a couple more miles. And this is the expression on the face of a man who has just been told that he will be served ragu of beef. He is so he's excited thrilled. about this meal. Mm, smells wonderful. What are we having? Ragu of beef. Ragu of beef. Angel food cake with fresh strawberries. Oh boy! I mean. He he's a he's a child. He's a he's a seven year old boy here, excited about the fact that he's getting ragu of beef, an angel food cake, and a Caesar salad. He is delighted, and uh, I, as an audience member, am happy for him too because that does sound delicious. I don't know what ragu of beef is. I would like to have some though. Yeah, it's just kind of slow. This is a Cooked beefy sauce. Yeah, I'm okay. assuming with spaghetti or something. Okay, okay. So it is a sort of uh, a ground up mm. beef. You would yeah, assume. I would imagine like that? so, or, okay. or like chunks of kind of like in slow cooked that they just fall to pieces. Ah, cheese okay. Souffle, pie and pudding on flambe. Oh, they do say that in uh, "Be Our Guest," don't they? Mm -hmm. uh, Lumiere, <laughs> always helping us. Uh, so he pops back in. He's so excited that he's having himself a big old ragu of beef dinner. He is singing and dancing to beat the band. 
he goes into this entire uh, one man show routine for himself, for the benefit of nobody else, because he is driving a car solo at this point. Of, he is you know, so excited of, that you know. he's in the car by himself and he's going to have dinner <laughs> I, when he pulls look, in. There's it's some be great. there's some merit there, you know. So he's going through this whole play acting of like, oh, monsieur, you know, like what what, what do you have on the menu today? Oh, the lobster thermidor? Mm, no, I don't think so. You know the uh, the bouillabaisse? No, 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 I don't think so. Oh, ragu of beef. Oh boy, I'm your boy. He says something like that. Ragu of beef. I'm your boy. So Tacey's in the back of the trailer. On a, a, just a, this is the bumpiest road that's ever existed. I don't know why they've chosen this route, but here we are. And boy, dinner prep is not going very well. Not unlike the tilted trailer eggs. Uh, we get the Caesar salad scene here where things just go everywhere. She's trying to make the Caesar salad. And when she does, I noticed that she cracked two raw eggs into it. Is that normal with a Caesar salad? No. Why would she do not. that? Um, I think that is actually a potential recipe from a time long ago before the salad dressings maybe were in the bottle. But like Caesar dressing is supposed to have like, and I saw she put like the sardines in there. It's mm-hmm. like the nichoa, whatever mm. that's cut up into it. I think the egg actually mixed with the vinegar is what makes the sort of creaminess. Ah, okay, okay. Back in the day. Hey, I mean, that's enough uh, explanation for me. I, true or false, I believe it now. Fact. Thanks, sis. Fact. Uh, yeah, so just everything goes everywhere, though. She's crashing into the cabinets. The flour blows up at a certain point. It becomes a big old dusty, sweaty, sloppy mess. She puts her fist through the angel food cake. It's flying everywhere. It's a rough scene. And, you know, he, but he's just, you know, singing and dancing, driving this car. He sings and dances his way back to the trailer after he is parked, only to get himself a big old handful of cake in the face. Wah, wah, wah. So now many of the Caesar salad dressings use a mayonnaise base instead yeah. of raw eggs. Okay. Mm, but okay. it used to be that, yes. A full raw egg. It would be olive oil thickened with raw eggs, and it would be anchovy paste, Mm. tuna, etc. Sounds lovely. It does. Um, But that's basically what mayonnaise is. Yeah, it it is. It is. It's like Mm. eggs and olive oil. Yeah. Olive oil. Yeah. Mm. It's just pre-made. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Well, that thank, always sounds uh, unhealthy, but it's here we go. Del- in a delicious way, though. But yeah, hey, whatever, you guys yeah. heard it here first or last, depending on <laughs> how old you are, I guess. Uh, here in the South, they will fight over whether you use Dukes or Hellman's. Uh, always Hellman's. For mayonnaise. Catherine's oh, pro God, Hellman's. No. You Dukes? We're a Dukes house. Mm. <laughs> um, but I also, shh, don't tell the people in the South that love my deviled eggs because i also put in a healthy dollop of miracle whip oh never don't say it out loud don't they know know. now but i use both i use dukes and i use miracle whip and every southerner that tries them that goes this is amazing i love these (laughs) what's your recipe (laughs) look you're just a professional woman in the world trying to make your way through life you got to do what you got to do those bumpkins don't need to know right i mean just eat eat the deviled eggs Fuck off. Does it taste good? Eat it. Yeah, eat it. You don't need to know what's in there. Shut up and eat it. So he takes her into town to Madge's Dirty Beauty Salon. This is a very dirty facade uh, of a beauty salon. I just wanted to point this out for you ladies in case Mm. you wanted to get your hair did or whatever. Um, We've got a Philip Morris sign up there too. Why not? You know, have some cigs. Uh, Also, they're doing finger wave hairspray. Well, that's true. That's true. (laughs) So he drops her off, plunks a bunch of quarters into like half a dozen uh, parking meters to park the car, meets back with her at a diner where they enjoy some, uh, I mean, some amazing diner coffee and cigarettes. Like, that's just diner life. I love that so much. You realize what they should have done instead of the... And I get this would then take out the whole scene with the rocking and the she's covered mm-hmm, and all mm-hmm. the stuff, right? But like maybe stop a half an hour earlier or get to a destination half an hour to an hour earlier so they can settle in and relax. Yeah. That would be logical. Yeah, that would right. maybe be an easier way to handle this. 
And, oh, and indeed, mm-hmm. she does find out the error of her ways. The, the gals at the beauty salon inform her that, like, oh, it's illegal for you. Because everybody's talking trailers in 1954 again. Mm-hmm. Everybody's well-versed yes. in trailer life and how a trailer works. I, I can't conceive of this. If they don't have one, they want one. <laughs> and if they want one, they're dreaming about they're it. They're lusting they're after it. They're so it. horny they're for, trailers. for trailers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Are. It's all they wanted. It's what they won the war for. If this trailer's rocking, don't come a-knocking. Well, they wish. That, that's, what, that's the life they want to live. They're so <laughs> right? jealous. So she's like, it was a crazy idea for me to be back there. But then she kind of blames him for putting her back there, which I thought was a weird yeah, twist. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, I, I think this is the thing all the way through. The, the, these great ideas are hers, and then when they all go terribly wrong, it's all his fault. Yeah, he takes the fall for it. Yeah. Uh, but he tells her, look, I just had an offer for the trailer. This guy's going to give us a grand, and then he'll just take over the payments for the rest of it. So, you know, they're they're out 750 or whatever, but they're also out of living in a trailer. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I really think we should consider doing this. And just get a house. Why, why are we fucking with this? Let's just live in a house and then we don't have to spill beef or ragu everywhere. She is, uh, of course, very upset about this because it's her dream to live in a trailer. Um, and she's just, it's a hard no from her. It's a no from her. So later, uh, Nick is inventorying the supplies that they have in the trailer. So this entire time, Tasty has been putting up approximately. Did you say tasty or tasty? Tasty, tasty. They sound like tasty. It did, oh. it did like, sound like, did it say tasty? The new black. It did sound like tasty. <laughs> Maybe I, thought, the, I thought you did that before orange, as well. Really? Yeah. Oh no. Maybe I did. I mean, yeah, orange is the right. new black. Uh, we could remake this with <laughs> tasty. I think she'd be great. I bet you that's his pet name for her when they finally get around to doing it in those tasty, twin beds back tasty. there. Yeah. Oh yeah. But she's been putting up preserves, everybody. Like two hundred mm-hmm. jars of jams Everywhere we have they here. Go. Yes. She's she's collecting boulders and yeah. jars of preserves. Let's look at all these rocks here. We got oh we got rocks for days, and. Nikki's looking at this and he's looking at this map that says that they have to climb an elevation of 8,000 feet tomorrow. And he's like, all right. I mean, this is the confused look on his face of like, why do we have so many jams? Like, <laughs> can anybody eat this much jam ever in a, in a lifetime? It's, it's a lot. They're double stacked here. Yeah, that, that's, that's about the amount of jam that my mom puts up every year. Does she, does she also hide them into the sofa though? Like this no. whole thing is filled with them. No. But she, your mother, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, lives in a house? Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, they're what not trying to move it anywhere, make? but yeah, they, they, they're they getting through it. I mean, they have some vintage jams. Do that, Does she theme them? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Can I go to your mom's and have a jam party? Yeah. Yeah, we all got to- That gotta, sounds amazing. We need to do that. She got, actually oh, shipped go. jam out to me, which was amazing. Did, well, I mean, that's a good mom. <gasps> I know, right? Maybe that's what Tasty Tasty really Tasty needs to be doing is <laughs> shipping some jams. Tasty Tasty's <laughs> preserves. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, he sits her down. He starts calmly explaining, like, here's the deal. We got to go very high tomorrow. I know that the guy told us that this trailer could handle it, but we've loaded it up now with boulders from across America and then a half an orchard's worth of preserves. We have to ditch this stuff if we're going to make it alive. It's just a matter of safety. And he puts his foot down about it, and then he takes off to go have the car looked at and tended to for their big day tomorrow. So she is considering all of her jams, can't part with a single one of them. She then considers all of her boulders, can't part with any of them. She loves them all so much. And to be fair, she's a collector. These are nice looking rocks. I will give her points there. Some of them are very nice and colorful looking rocks. It would be a shame to ditch them at this point of the excursion. So what she decides to do with the help of the local trailer park manager is Let's just redistribute the weight a little bit more evenly. And that way, nobody will notice that we're carrying a mountain's worth of rock with us up this mountain. She's not going to tell Nikki, of course. Uh, she's going to just be like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's taken care of. Don't so worry fun. about it. Yeah. It's That's so not a rock in the oven. Um, oh, no. It's, no, 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 no. That's your ragu of beef done for tonight. Don't worry about it. So the next day, they start their climb and. Again, the, everybody's talking trailers, so even municipal signage uh, includes notes such as Difficult 20 miles of trails. steep, narrow, winding road ahead, difficult for trailers. Mm-hmm. Everybody's thinking trailers. Everybody wants one. The future was trailers. And this is a very steep grade. 
this is insanity. I don't know how or why. Everything that's inside this trailer, and we're looking at, again, they're going up 45 degrees. Everything is falling over inside there, I think, or or close to. It's a... It's very close to just falling apart entirely, but they keep, uh, they keep climbing and climbing. And as they climb, they have some, uh, kind of amusing, awkward, half listening, panicky conversation about some book that she's reading, but not actually reading. And it's kind of amusing. And we get a lot of, uh, shots of this mountainside and them taking these corners and boulders careening down and, they get stuck at a corner at one point and they're scraping along the rocks and they have to back it up. And Oof, I mean, yeah, this is it's frightening. Yeah. And this is all uh, again on location. It appears to be this, uh, this does seem to be an actual trailer out on a cliff side that they're backing up very close to the cliff's edge there in the mountains. And at a certain point, oncoming traffic shows up. We get a guy in a car who they have to pass and uh, it is terrifying. And eventually they do in fact, Make the climb, but not before all of those rocks and preserves come sliding out of their hiding places, doing the exact thing that everybody was worried about in the first place, and start weighing down one side of the trailer. Nikki gets a load of this, and he is outraged, because this has been a real sweaty, panicky situation, as has most of this movie for him. Uh, He's lost years of his life at this point, just trying to move this trailer to Colorado. And he kind of snaps at this point, and he starts throwing all the jams and all the stones over the cliffside. And she is outraged, of course, but he's just like, you could have killed us. This is, this is what I was talking about. And we easily could have died. I've lost my mind. We're done with this. And at this point, we're at the end of the flashback. And we return to the cozy office at the Laramie Trailer Park, where he is finishing telling his tale to the older gentleman. And he concludes with, uh, you know, that night I drove away just trying to cool down. When I got back, the trailer was gone. So now I've just been racing around the area. How how did she move the trailer? I'm guessing she must have, she must have done that her talking convincing thing for somebody else who came by, I guess, and had a trailer hitch. Uh, okay. I don't know. She plied them with preserves yeah. and convinced them to move her trailer. Yeah. I will offer you two boulders and three jars of preserves if you will move me to a trailer park in Laramie, uh, which they do, of course. And at this point, we do get an interesting line from the older gentleman who does say, quote unquote, I remember when mother and I were married. Mother. Mother. So he is one of these guys. They're in the they're out there. They're in the world referring to his wife as mother. Mm-hmm. Which is no, uh, mm-hmm. no, thank you. That's real. Yeah, no, it's just why are we doing this? I remember when mother and I were married. We lived in a two-room shack. Yes, she is the mother of your children, presumably. I'm guessing mm-hmm. that's where that comes from. They are of retiring age, uh, but at this point, hey, the kids are gone. Just connect. She, connect she with has your a wife. name. Yeah, connect with her. Whatever her name is, yeah. call her by her name. For fuck's sake. Uh, but he does advise, he offers some good advice. He says, look, most of the problem, when we started off, we lived in this small place and it was shitty, but you know, we had to get it together because it was cold. So we got warm together. Hey, oh, and you know, most of our fights would have been solved by two simple words. Just apologize. Just say you're sorry. Say it. I'm sorry. So Nikki goes back out into the rain and joins Tacy, who pulls up with the older gentleman's wife who is very excited to buy this new trailer, but he's like, honey, give, give it a minute here. Let's, let's see what happens, see how this plays out. So they go over to the trailer together. And Nikki is very close to saying he's sorry, but he just can't bring himself to do it. So he's like, all right, well, I guess this is it. And he heads out to the car. She has some awakening and decides that she has changed her mind entirely, goes chasing after him into the rain, because rain equals drama, everybody. And Mm -hmm. then they fall into each other's arms and then they apologize to one another. And then they continue living their life as trailer trash. And (laughs) the end. (laughs) You realize the next installment is the exact same shit, different week. Yeah, right. This is, this is a cycle. They will repeat inevitably over and over and over again. Uh, Real quick. We rarely talk about end credits, but I did want to point out the end credits here. We're back to the wagon wheel and the Americana ribbon, but Nikki gets 
a middle name thrown in. Nobody else has a middle name. It's rare you see a middle name, but I feel like this was a script where it was written as, oh yeah, there's an Italian dude. And then he meets this uh, fiery redhead who wants a trailer or whatever. And they were like, yeah, we can work with this. And so Nicholas Collini becomes Nicholas Carlos Collini, I think mm-hmm. to just sort of, hey guys, we know he's not Italian. He's clearly a cute, you watch him on television every week. He's a Nicholas Carlos Collini. Either his, you know, you figure it out, tell yourself a story that makes this happen. But yeah, he's an Italian Cuban. Roll with it is what they're telling you. So Mm -hmm. just keep it in mind. And we are done with the long, long trailer. So at this point, the final, vital, critical, essential question on behalf of all humanity, Catherine Sherlock, Mm. the long, long trailer. Yes. Do we keep watching this? No. Okay. Tell me why. Uh... It was just painful for me. Okay. What was so hard about this one? Well, it's all the anxiety stuff. Okay. Um, and I'm not a big fan of the physical comedy. Slapstick isn't my thing. Yeah, okay. And I, it was just, um, yeah, there was just, I, I mean, it was kind of inter- It was an interesting concept and I did like the landscape mm-hmm. bits. And I thought, yeah, sure, there's some logic there. You would mm-hmm. do it for this. But like... Just no. Just the premise. I would. No. I, yeah, I would. I don't. I don't ever want to see this ever again. Okay. Okay. You've made it. Was, it was a hard watch. <laughs> oh no! I'm so sorry. No, no. It, I did. I ended up just wandering off and doing other things. It's the. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a long, long trailer. Don't worry about it. Don't sweat it. Uh, the entire all of society has wandered off to do other things <laughs> <laughs> while a long, long trailer goes on an endless loop and some void. Uh, okay, so it's a no from you. Mm. Carolyn, how are you feeling about this? Do we keep watching this? Yeah. It was a fun romp. Okay. I thought it was stupid and enjoyable all at the same time. Um, slice of weird Americana life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I always enjoy when the women wear the pants in the relationship, as Lucy clearly does. Yes. So, yeah. I mean, I'm not, I'm not offended by it. I... I'm in agreement with you. I say this is a yes. I am kind of surprised this is not held in higher esteem. I'm not, it's not a good movie, right? Like I'm not saying it's, this is great cinema by any means, but oh God, no. as far as a glimpse into kind of everyday life at this time in this very specific segment of Americana, the trailer life style, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. I think this is great. I mean, th- now look, there are no, no minorities in this film, of course, but there are also no uh, no offensive terms thrown around. There are no sexual assaults as we have seen in films past. No, no, no. no I mean, no. it's all very, like, it's pretty soft, right? I feel like it's kind of soft and fuzzy. Even their conflict, mm-hmm. when they're storming around, like, I feel the chemistry between the two of them that I can only imagine probably just stems from them being real life partners. But like, I think mm-hmm. they're good together. I think performance wise, they're both really good. I think Ricky's great or Desi rather. Um, yeah. And I mean, the, his character in this is uh, converse to all of the other films. I think we've seen, he's an actual sensible man who is genuinely trying to do the right thing by the woman he loves. Yes. I think. And, and right. respect her. If this was pillow. So, so, so much to the point where he will put his life in danger. Yeah. He's her. He's into her. Mm. If this was pillow talk, he'd be slapping her across the face. Yeah. It would be one of those movies. Yeah, exactly. But it's not. No. Right. It's right. Uh, I mean, I guess I just like, uh, it's one of the things I like about I Love Lucy in general is that, yeah, they've got great chemistry. She gets away with a hell of a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. I love it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it. they were ahead of their time. They really were. Yeah. This- yeah. I mean, she definitely was. I mean, didn't she push for the pilot of Star Trek? I think so. Yeah, I think yeah, they were producers. Was, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I believe so. Uh, yeah, so very visionary, you know. And obviously, there's the history of them revolutionizing how sitcoms are filmed and all these yeah. things. I mean, they had their own studios. It was a big deal. Mm. Uh, yeah. She was on television for like 40 years or something like that. It was crazy. Yep. There were many iterations of her show. But yeah, as far as this film goes, it's harmless. And I would like to see it restored again. I'd like to see a nicer version of this or upscale it with, you know, for HD purposes, because there's good 50s stuff in here. They could totally revamp this in a glamping, 
like millennial trailer. They could, this could be a rom com so easy in redo in redoing this. It just would be a, it would be like a different take, but it would be like a millennial take. I do feel like this has been uh, remade in several ways. You know, the, again, this the the sort of road trip movie, the vacation movie. Um, I, you know, there was that movie RV that came out, you know, mm-hmm. 15 years ago or whatever. Uh, Great Outdoors has elements of this. Like it's a, uh, it's mm-hmm. a type, you know, we've seen this done mm-hmm. in more contemporary times, but this is all right, I think. So it's, it's a yes for me. Let's talk about next week's show. Mm. So next week, okay. everybody take notes. We are going to be watching. We're st- it's still summer vacation. We are still out there. 1964, very close to the end of our our window of exploration here, 10 years after the long, long trailer, it is Man's Favorite Sport. The author of a best-selling fishing guide is actually extremely inexperienced in the sport, which causes mayhem when he is entered into a competition. This was directed by Howard Hawks, a very famous film director, and stars Rock Hudson, whom we have seen at Pillow Talk and Written on the Wind. And also stars the real hot Paula Prentice, who we saw in Bachelor in Paradise. She was mm. the neighbor who was yes. using the, uh, what do you call it? The garbage disposal. So this is her star vehicle. Short shorts. And she had the very short shorts. Nice. And she, in this film, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, wears a very uh, tight uh, snorkeling bodysuit. Which is, you know, keep oh, keep looking out for that. Know. Yeah, right, right. Mm. Paula Prentice, she's still alive. We should call her up see if she's out there. Um, but anyway, thus concludes old movie time machine for this week. Catherine Sherlock, thank you so much for joining. Thank you for having me. Of course, anytime. Hey, sis, you're the best sis in the biz. Yes. Thank you so much for joining. Oh, it's always my pleasure. And we'll see you next week. And so concludes yet another episode of Old Movie Time Machine. If you'd like what you heard, the great news is that there is more than double the content available here. That's right. If you go to our Patreon page, we call it The Boom Room. You can get the link in the show notes. You can get twice the content. We talked about the long, long trailer for, I think, over two hours. So you can get twice the content. If you sign up there, it's $2 a month and you can get the full uncut episodes. You definitely want to be a part of that. So check it out. Uh, If you would like to tell us what you think about the long, long trailer, please email us at partyline at oldmovietimemachine.com. We would love to hear what you have to say about Nikki and Tacey's adventures out on the highways and byways of 1950s America. Uh, Let us know. Now, for next week's film, Man's Favorite Sport, 1964, this is available for you to watch out in the world. Uh, You can rent or buy this at the following locations. Apple TV, Amazon, Google Play, YouTube, Vudu, DirecTV, and Microsoft. Just Microsoft? That can't be... Microsoft Store. You can find Man's Favorite Sport. Uh, You definitely want to check it out. Join us for our little summer vacation. You know, let's go out fishing, guys. So watch that, uh, and we will see you back here next Wednesday for another episode of Old Movie Time Machine.